listeners and viewers. Uh, welcome to Speakers Bank, our voices, our views. Uh, today we're here with one of our new speakers, Roman. Um, he's here to talk to us about his, uh, his stroke and, uh, and his life. Um, hi Ron, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yep, g'day Troopers, my name's Ron Mullen. I'm a former Australian uh, men's fast pitch softballer who travelled around the world for years playing men's softball until I suffered a massive stroke over seven years ago and had to learn to walk again, which took me two years of painful rehab. So I'm here to talk about all the positives that can come from having a chronic disability rather than the negatives, but about working hard and all the rest of it that goes with it. Yeah, that's great. It's inspirational as well. Um, so first, we'll just go into a bit of background info on your own. Um, we'll start off with uh, your early life and talk about a bit about softball as well. Well, I grew up in Upper Crossing and I started out playing softball down at Werribee as a young junior and basically went through all the ranks until eventually I made a Victorian team and then I got noticed and went to New Zealand to play and. And then from New Zealand, I went across to America and then Japan, and I was fortunate enough to play for Australia in the World Championships as well, and played in Europe as well. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. And um, so that, um, that ended in what year, 2013, did you say? <clears throat> well, yeah, 2013, April 26, was the day I had my stroke, my dad's birthday. Mm. So it's easy for me to remember. Not a good present, but... <laughs> no, well, it's been not. The funniest part was when I had my stroke and they were taking me in the ambulance, the first thing I thought was, oh, fuck, I haven't deleted my history on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, just in case someone goes on there. Uh, so, we'll go on um, talking about a uh, bit about the, the rehab side of uh, things. So, 2013, um, what, how did they say your condition was? What did they say about it? Well, they basically said because of the size of the bleed on my brain that I'd basically never be able to walk again. I'd be uh, disabled for the rest of my life and I'd need full-time care. So, but it, I spent two and a half years doing rehab to learn to walk again. Once I, got, once I was able to take one step, I knew I was able to take a thousand. Mm -hmm. So then over time, I just keep working on 1% improvement every day and things that I never thought I could do, I gradually just build up slowly and slowly, just learning and getting stronger every day. So now I can do pretty much anything I, I like. So you say it took you two years to take one step, was it? Yeah. Two years, and then from, from then onwards, it was the same shape, really? Well, it's still terrifying because I can't feel my left leg. So if you've ever had pins and needles in your feet, times that by about a thousand, when your foot goes numb, that's what my leg feels like every day. Mm. Like my my talks are all about we all have choices in the world. You know, if, when I get out of bed, I'm the same as any other person in the world. Sure, I've got a disability, but I make after I take my first step, I make choices on what I do in life. So same as you guys do, everybody does. We make our own decisions on what we do. So once I take my first step, I have the choice of what I can be. Like when the doctors and everyone else say you can't do this and you can't do that, I basically said fuck you, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Mm. And that, that's pretty much what you should, should be saying. That's right. Like trying to put limitations on you when you know that you can exactly. achieve something. Yeah. Like since my stroke I've started my own sportswear brand, um, selling runners and clothing in my own brand and I've uh, softball and baseball gloves because that's something that I know. Mm. Um, but I'm, I'm also writing my own book. Nice, nice. So, which is about trying to help other people to, not so much just talk about a disability, but to help go you through tough times. And, and what's, the, what's the title called of that book? Uh, Life's Not on Rainbows and Fucking Sunshine. <laughs> yeah. Which is true. I think it's very apt for, uh, like now, everyone going through COVID, everybody's learnt that we're quite vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, but you, it shows that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. When you think things are really bad, that there is a lot at the end of the tunnel. And I have, I've also learned one really important thing, which is a bad day does not make a bad life. Like if you're having a bad day, you can still have a great life. You just have to sit back and think of the important things and, and push forward. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and I think yeah, you're showing that with each step forward each day. Well, just yeah, going through. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll go on a bit. Um, you said you had a brand, actually, as well. Yep. Um, I, I can see it here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it out. 
Do you want to tell us about the, about the brand? Well, like I said, because of my stroke, I was unable to go back to my work, working on all, all rigs and doing rope access. So I started up my own brand, doing shoes and clothing. So that's my first runner that I brought here. So, and if you could show the end the on the, on the, the box. box. Yep. So basically I'm going to design my brand about the M logo, which I think screams Australia, the M with the kangaroo. Oh, yeah, I'm with that. So M for Mullen, which is my surname. Yes, I'm a wanker because I named it after myself. <laughs> but why can't an Australian build a global brand? You know, there's no reason why I can't. If um, somebody, if an American make Nike and Adidas and all the, or Europe can do Adidas, why can't an Australian do a global brand? Yeah. The only limits that we put is what we, the only limits we have is what we put on ourselves. So, which again is the slogan of my company, which is no limits by the way. And I'll put that as part of my recovery, but also in regards to just generally speaking in life. I've learned if you can dress yourself, and if you can walk, there's no limits on what you can achieve. Hmm. Yeah, and you're showing that. I like this, um, I like red, you've got mitts as well. Yeah, um, softball and baseball gloves, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, check that out. Uh, you've got an Instagram page as well. Um, do you want to, what was the Instagram page? My Instagram is Marlon Rowan. Yeah, and uh, we'll, check that, we'll check that in the description as well, put the, put the link in. Um, yeah, so, so moving forward as well, actually, with, with the brand, have you found any struggles actually um, creating, creating the brand? Not really. The challenge is that people like to buy brand names like yeah. Nike and Adidas and Under Armour and all the rest of it. People don't necessarily want, like, when people feel my product and try them on, they love them because the quality is really quite good. Because, because it's in my family name, I have demanded that the quality has to be of the highest level. Yeah. So of that's the biggest challenge, and and the other problem is I've had to fund it all myself. Mm. So yeah. it's just again, but it's the same as everything in life. I just you don't get the everything straight away. I just build on one percent improvement in my brand, mm. in my life, everything I do. My life now has gone from being focused about sports to now improving myself every day. Mm. Yeah, nice. So, uh, what was I going to say? Um, the, uh, oh, I've got a bit blank. We can edit this out. Yeah, we can edit this out. We can tell her to edit this out. <laughs> She'll be okay. And you do this for a job. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I saying after that? The brand, uh, the book. What's up? Can you help me? Um, uh, what was I saying? Uh, porn? No, 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 no. no. I thought about getting into porn, but I'm. Um, no. Um, you should watch out with the name. <laughs> Not again. Um, um, we can talk about yeah. you becoming a public speaker. Oh yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, being a public speaker. Okay. Yeah. Um, <coughs> you want three. So yeah, from public uh, public speaking, and uh, we got to that. Well, I'm really interested in getting out and doing motivational speaking to encourage people that on their worth. Like I know, I, I look at people walking around just not understanding the greatness they have in them. Because I, I, I was exactly the same. Before when I was playing sports and I was physically fit and healthy, I didn't know how amazing I was. But then when you get everything taken away from you in a split second, I want to help people understand that anything they want to achieve, they can. Yes, it's difficult, but boo-hoo. You know, life is hard, you know. Greatness comes from pain. So my whole role is to help motivate people to become better, whether it become better at their job, whether it be become better at sports, or just generally become better people, understand what's important in life. That is my major factor. Mm. So that's what I look forward to happen with. Yeah, so I, I think that you're going to inspire a lot of people um, going, going to these talks. Um, yeah, we're going to get, get your story out there. And I just, I want to talk about the positives. I think too many people look at a disabled person and they think oh, all the negatives, what they forget. Yes, I'm a person, I'm a dis I'm not a disabled person, but I'm a person with a disability. Exactly. I think that's the difference. Yeah, so, see the person with exactly. a disability. Well, yeah. a perfect example is Dylan Alcock just won the Australian Open again. Mm. And because he's in a wheelchair, 
the country doesn't make a big deal about it. If he was a, if he was a, um, a normal athlete, Australia would be going crazy about Dylan Alcott. But because he's in a wheelchair, it's not looked at as being a, a proper athlete, I guess. Mm. Many more. Yeah, which in actual fact, he's probably more of an athlete than he's mm. than an able-bodied athlete. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Is that? A, um, I'm not too sure about softball and um, in disability. What's the? Is that a no. softball disability? No. No. I actually got asked to go on this Special Olympics, but yeah, I'm too focused on myself, improving myself, and like I said, because I've got two young kids, my journey of learning to walk again was to show them. Mm. of what is possible. Like when I was told that, you know, I'll never walk in, I'll never do this again. It wasn't to stick it up with doctors, it was to show my kids of what is possible. But a little bit to stick it up to the doctors. Well, <laughs> well what I've learned is that there are good plumbers in the world and there are bad plumbers. Well, it goes the same with doctors as well. There are good doctors, which are lots of wonderful doctors, but there's also bad doctors. And that's why it's always good to get a second opinion. Yeah. Don't listen to me, but find doctors and listen, you know, get second opinions and work from there. Mm. But physios, I've, I've met some of the most amazing people through my journey. Physios are wonderful people. When I first had my stroke, I couldn't even sit up in a chair. So I had to work for three months just on my call to be able to sit up. Because when you stand up, yeah. you use a lot of your call when you stand. But just, just to sit up even. That's like, right. So yeah. for three months, I just worked on my cool. Mm. So, and that's your physio, was it? Exactly right, yeah. What other, um, so you've gone through a physio and you've gone through an osteo? I've pretty much tried every treatment yeah, known to, you know, I even went to America last year or two years ago and tried a treatment over there, spent $100,000 of my own money to have a treatment only available in America, mm -hmm. but it didn't really help, but I had yeah. to do it because I wanted to take the chance. Yeah. So, really, you travel all the way to America. That's a big trip. <laughs> it probably didn't help me going straight, having trip and going straight into Hooters afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Having beers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Go to the American way. But the doctor said, I said to the doctor, could I have beers after the trip? And he goes, you do what you normally do. Mm. I'm like, you do know that I'm Australian and I'm. Yeah. So he didn't well, really understand, but yeah. They don't, they don't get that it's slap for dinner. The, the <laughs> one thing that. I've learned is to always have a sense of humour through anything going wrong. You know, mm -hmm. if you can't, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, well, you're not going to do very well at it. If you're working really hard, and you're not enjoying it, then are you going to be the best mm -hmm. at what you do? You know, rather than someone who is not doing really well at work, and you go into them and say, "Listen, uh, Michael, we see your figures are down uh, for the third quarter. If you don't improve your figures, I don't know if we can keep your job here." Well, rather than saying that, how about going into Michael and saying, Michael, is everything okay with you? How can we help you, you know, to achieve your goals, achieve your targets? Yeah. You know, work on the positives, help people to become their best they can be, yeah. essentially. I think too often these days, the people are really are focusing on the negatives yeah. rather than what, what people can't do, what they're not doing, and we should really be focusing on what they might need and what they can do. Yep. You know, they are going to really, really value at that thing. And I'm fortunate because I pretty much, after having a life-threatening injury, a life-altering moment, I don't give two fucks what people think about me. I say what I want, I do what I want. If they don't like it, well then boo-hoo. That's their problem. So, yeah. Yeah, sure. and Mimi, I apologise for all the swearing <laughs> from Michael, clearly. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> But it's raw, it's real. Yeah, this it's is me. Real. This, yeah, this is wrong. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, yeah, I think it's, I think, yeah, I think it's great that you, you're not putting any limitations and you're just, you're just going for it. Um, I, I wanted to quickly ask as well, what would you give, um, what advice would you give to someone that might have just gone and, and, and uh, I don't know, got in this condition, had a stroke, um, something to look out for, something, you know, any, any message? Well, I think the, the easiest thing when something goes bad is trust in your medical team and give effort. Anybody can give effort. Effort never has a bad day. You know, you trust in your physios, they've got the expertise. You trust them and then you just give the effort to what you have to do. Mm -hmm. And over time, things will come better. So, yeah, so I guess the key, the big thing I want to take away from that is effort. 
you know, anybody can give effort. You know, you don't have to be the great... Michael Jordan, who was the greatest sports person of uh, well, all time, mm -hmm. he worked hard. That's how he became great. He gave effort. He got cut from his high school. That's right. Team. So it shows, you know. No effort, no outcome. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Um, uh, so I think um, we'll wrap things up. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Ron, for taking the time out of your day to speak with us. Um, is there anything that you wanted to say, lastly, for to the viewers and listeners? Um, I'm sorry to put you on the spot there. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. No, no, again, I just I hope this has resonated with anyone. So, like I said, this, for me, this is all about just trying to help other people connect to themselves mm -hmm. and find out what is important in life. Yeah. So, it's not wealth or, or you know, houses and cars and everything like that. It's, it's all about how your body feels and having pride in yourself. Mm -hmm. You know? Be honest to yourself and have belief. Self-belief is the most important thing. Yeah. That's it. Uh, yeah, that's a great message. Um, so thanks uh, viewers and listeners um, for, for listening to Ron's uh, Ron talk. If you'd like to contact us, you can uh, go to our website, speakersbank.org.au. You can uh, access us on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, thank you again for listening. And I will see you in the next one.